Bombshell testimony coming out of Georgia, which could change the game for at least this one state. And there's a ton of other news coming out of other states. The legal battle for Donald Trump is far from over. From CBS, lawmakers hear bombshell allegations of Georgia election fraud. The image you see, President, President Donald Trump's attorney alleged votes in Georgia were counted without supervision. That's an understatement. In the video presented that CBS is covering, there is a black table for some reason in position. And once everybody leaves in the surveillance footage, they pull out a box of votes and begin counting. Now, the allegation is that the people working here told all the observers, we're not counting anymore. You guys need to leave. People left. They then pull out ballots from under a table and begin counting. There are attempts to debunk this, but I don't think the attempts to debunk it actually do any debunking. One of the statements that these fact checking organizations got claiming how this is fake news doesn't even reflect what's on the video. Like some guy said, oh, no, 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 they, that was next to the table. And, and they had put ballots in it and then put it next to the table. And it's like, there's, there's a video. We all watched it. They pull a box out from under a table after everyone leaves and start counting. Why aren't there observers there? Well, well, they don't legally have to be observers there. So you mean that Donald Trump, the Republicans who have been screaming about fraud, couldn't get a single Republican to be like, I'll stay and watch? No, it sounds like Occam's razor would suggest they told the observers to leave as what the Trump campaign alleged and then started counting ballots they pulled out from under a table. What's your explanation for this? We got to break this down. My friends, there's a bunch of news coming out of PA. Uh, Alito has, has issued a, a statement calling for a decision on this, this, this case that could declare votes in Pennsylvania con- unconstitutional. I, I, I got to break this down. So we'll, we'll get to that one later, maybe at 1 p.m. This story, this is one of the biggest stories of the year. I'm sorry, it is. CBS reports Thursday. A Georgia Senate Judiciary Subcommittee heard a new jaw-dropping allega- uh, heard new jaw-dropping allegations of alleged election fraud in the state from several people, including Trump's attorney Rudy Giuliani. The supposed videotape evidence alleges proof of ballots being counted without oversight. A subcommittee comprised of both Republicans and Democrats held a hearing at the state capitol for perhaps the biggest bombshell presented to lawmakers from inside State Farm Arena. For the first time, the president's legal team, led by Giuliani, presented surveillance video from the state's largest voting center. The video allegedly shows people taking out at least four boxes of ballots from underneath a table and then counting them after hours with no election supervisors present. Sorry, you ain't getting past this one. I don't know what we do from here. Four boxes. How many votes is that? I believe they're actually saying boxes contain thousands of ballots, and this is way more than enough to overcome Joe Biden's lead in the state. Well, I got to be, I'll wait for it. We'll read the story and see what they say. Quote, the same person that stayed behind, the person that cleared the place out under the pretense that we are going to stop counting, is the person who put the table there at 822 in the morning. I saw four suitcases come out from underneath the table, attorney Jackie Pick said. So we can see here in the video, it's this this black table right here. People leave. Let's read on. It is believed that each box box consisted of about 6,000 ballots, if accurate. That would amount to about 24,000 potential votes. However, at least one state lawmaker questioned the validity of the video. Quote, the question is, since this has been debunked repeatedly, what evidence can you give to us that counters what our, uh, what our election officials have presented with only an hour ago, the lawmaker said, wait, what? Attorney Pick said, you just saw it. Your officials need to watch the video. Giuliani and his team also introduced witnesses to verify additional fraud. Each witness claimed to have signed sworn affidavits. Let's play a game. Who do you trust? Random lawmakers who didn't watch the videos and issued these blanket statements that are meaningless. People who've signed statements under penalty of perjury where they could go to prison. There is a video of them pulling the ballots out from under a table. What is this? It's been debunked repeatedly. Uh, Sorry, no, uh, that's hard evidence. This is the most substantive and significant evidence we've seen yet. But let me move on to a more in-depth view. This is from uh, American Greatness. Again, I could pull up a bunch of these right-wing sources that are not certified by mainstream media's favorite news guard. Now, people say, why do you you always bring up news guard, Tim? Because if a Microsoft-funded Uh, left biased mainstream media source says this uh, source is good. Try and debunk it now when I've got legitimate 
certified sources. I use CBS. Don't play games. American Greatness says video from election night in Georgia shows suitcases of ballots being pulled out from under a table after poll watchers were sent home. Now, these aren't suitcases. That's, an, that, that's incorrect. You can clearly see that they're standard black ballot boxes of some sort. They were, however, pulled out from under a table. They say the blockbuster surveillance video was presented during a hearing before the Georgia State Senate Committee, where Rudy Giuliani, pr- President Donald Trump's personal lawyer, presented his case to Georgia lawmakers. Jackie Pick, an attorney assisting Trump's legal team, said the highly suspicious activity took place at State Farm Arena, where absentee ballots and military ballots were tabulated. Quote, we have the tape from the first thing in the morning all the way to the close of the polls, she said, adding that two Republicans, two Republican field organizers had been sent here to observe. At no time were they permitted to observe in any meaningful way. Pick explained that the GOP observers were roped off all day with the media. According to their affidavits, a poll worker, a woman with blonde braids, announced at about 10 p.m. that they were done for the night and everyone needed to leave. The GOP observers said in their affidavits that they were told counting would resume at 8.30 in the morning. Multiple sworn statements corroborated by video evidence of the person talking or telling them something and then the people leaving. Who am I going to trust? Some random person who's like, no, no, you're mistaken. This is fake news. Or the people who swore under penalty of perjury with corroborating surveillance footage. I don't know if this is enough to overcome uh, uh, what's going on. I don't know if it'll be what Trump needs to win, but you cannot deny this. I don't know. I, I'm not saying this is evidence of widespread fraud, but 24,000 potential votes. This is a serious problem for us. I mean, it's good news for Trump supporters. You got your evidence. You got hard evidence, video surveillance evidence of people literally pulling out ballots from under a table after talking to people who then swore and swore in statements. They were told to leave. Okay. Pick said that after the press and poll watchers cleared out, Four remaining election workers remained behind and continued counting and tabulating well into the night. Quote, they will continue counting unobserved, unsupervised, not in public view, as your statute requires until about one in the morning. She explained that the reason they know the counting went on till 1 a.m. is because the GOP observers went to the tabulation center after they were forced to leave and were told by a news crew that the counting had actually continued. Quote, this shocked them. So they returned back to State Farm Arena at about 1 a.m. in the morning where they confirmed that people had, in fact, just left after the press and poll watchers were told to go home. It took until close to 10. Th- uh, it, t- it took until close to 1030 for the room to clear. Pick noted then at around 11 p.m., one of the women pulled a suitcase full of ballots out from under a table covered uh, with a tablecloth. Grant Stitch, uh, uh, Stinchfield says this is a total game changer. Sure looks like ballot stuffing in Georgia all caught on camera. Pick said when Trump's legal team first saw the video, they weren't sure if it was normal to store suitcases full of ballots under tables. So they viewed surveillance video from earlier in the day to see if that was the routine procedure. Indeed, it was not. She said that what they saw happening earlier in the day were ballots coming from boxes stored in an open area or coming through a door, not from suitcases hidden under the tables. Pick questioned the claim. Okay, so so I don't know what they mean by suitcases in the video. They look like big black ballot boxes. So perhaps I'm wrong. Pick questioned the chain of custody of the hidden ballots. Where did they come from? Who put them there? When did they put them there? She said the surveillance video shows that about 822 that morning, the woman with blonde braids had put the table with the hidden ballots in place. She pointed out that the culprit was the same operative who had kicked everyone out at 10 p.m. Quote, so the same person who stayed behind, the same person who cleared the place out under the pretense that we're going to stop counting is the person who put the table there, Pick declared. She told the lawmakers that she saw four suitcases full of ballots in uh, in all pulled out from under the table. What are these ballots doing there separated from all the other ballots? She Pick asked. And why are they only bringing them out when the place is cleared out with no witnesses? Pick noted the machines can tabulate about 3000 votes per hour and there were multiple machines in the room and they were there for two hours. You do the math. How many ballots went through those machines when there uh, when there was no one there to supervise? to be present, consistent with your statute and your rules. She estimated that the number could easily be beyond the margin of victory in Georgia. When Team Trump posted the surveillance video onto Twitter, the platform slapped a warning label on the tweet saying this claim about election fraud is disputed, even though it was a breaking story and no one had yet had time to dispute it. I'm just stop for a second. Okay, listen. 
there, there are already attempts by the left to try and debunk this. They're saying it's not true. OK, the story is not true. They've done nothing to debunk this other than just say they did. And that's a common thing we see in the media. They get a quote from one official saying, no, nope, that's not true. And they say debunked. Sorry. Got to ask. They have surveillance footage. They say that going back throughout the day, they're counting ballots like normal. Then they only pull this one out after everyone leaves. That alone, to me, is a massive red flag. But then you add in two sworn affidavits, maybe more from the GOP observer saying they were told to leave. And then you have the, the surveillance footage of the person telling them to leave and then pulling the ballots out. It makes no sense. I can only say that to me, this is overwhelming evidence of legit, serious voter fraud. Is it definitive proof? No, no. But this is well beyond anything we have seen in terms of hard evidence. Witness testimony only goes so far. Sworn affidavits are good, but imperfect. Some people just misunderstand. They get things wrong, but it is evidence. Now we have this. We have video footage showing it happening. What do we need now? I guess we need some kind of legit and hard investigation. But I'll tell you this. This might be enough to throw Georgia into dispute. The left keeps putting up these, these excuses, and these reasons why it doesn't matter. It's certifications already happened. It's done. It's done. No, it isn't. It is not done. On January 6th, votes can be disputed by Republicans. There, that, man, there's just too much to go through here. But I got I to gotta follow through on this story because with Pennsylvania, they're calling on the Supreme Court. Uh, Alito has already answered. And they're saying, no, 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 you can't do this. They might overturn Pennsylvania. I'm going to cover that in the next segment because we got to go through this. I got so much to go through here. This is huge news, by the way. OK, let me, let me say this. This is the story that you need to absolutely share. If you want to support my channel, sharing this video really does help. But let people see this. And I'm going to show you the fact check. I'm going to show you and I'm going to dispute it. Lead story says fact check. Video from Georgia does not show suitcases filled with ballots suspiciously pulled from under a table. Poll watchers were not told to leave. This is insane sworn statements under penalty of perjury. What gives them the right to say they were not told to leave? How do you fact check that? It does not show suitcases full of ballots. Oh, why? Because they're actually ballot boxes. That's how the fact check works. They're not suitcases. No, that's a semantic error. So I can say, I, I'll, I'll do this. Fact check. Video does not show illegal ballot stuffing done while someone was wearing a clown suit. Oh, it might show actual illegal ballot stuffing, but nobody was wearing a clown suit. That's what they do. Because one of the things they go on to say is that they weren't suitcases. But check this out. Check out one of the, uh, uh, I think this is a, let, let, let me show you some of the quotes. One quote says, election workers known as cutters are being told to leave, blah, blah, blah. If you look at the videotape, the work you see is work you would expect, which is you take the sealed suitcase looking things in. Whoa, wait, whoa. So they are suitcases. Okay. You place the ballots on the scanner in manageable batches and you scan them. They go on to say Francis Watson, chief investigator for the Georgia Secretary of State, told Lee's stories during a phone call on December 3rd that the ballots were in standard containers and the work during that time in question had nothing to do with putting with pulling ballots from under a table, she said. There wasn't a bin that had ballots in it under the table. Uh, there's a video of them. There's a video of them. You can watch the video of them pulling it out. I watched it. It was an empty bin and the ballots from it were actually out on the table when the media were still there. And then it was placed back into the box when the media were still there and placed next to the table. There's literally a video of them pulling it from under the table. This is insane. This is not a fact check. This is desperate. You know what I think this is? This lead stories website, what they do is they flag things on Facebook. I think this is just fake news in my opinion. I mean, this is not, a, this is not debunking anything. Poll watchers were not told to leave. Two sworn statements say otherwise. You can't assert that. We have sworn statements saying otherwise. How is this? This is, this is nuts. Let me read a little bit more of this. They say, nobody gave them any advice on what they should. Uh, nobody told them to stay. Nobody told them to leave. Nobody gave them any advice on what they should do. And it was still open for them to, or the public to come back in and view at whatever time they wanted to, so long as they were still working. Sworn affidavits, a video corroborating the sworn affidavits, a video showing a woman pulling the box from under a table, I believe four boxes. And this website saying, nope, didn't happen. You know why? Because this is going to pop up false on Facebook when people see it. 
and then you'll get this garbage website. I'll tell you this. Lead stories, they get certified by NewsGuard. And this is why I say if NewsGuard's got a certified you know, source saying it, then, then you know it's true, right? The reason why I say that is lead stories did a fake fact check on a tweet of mine. What they do is they took a tweet of mine that was 100% factually accurate and my opinion. And then they, they, someone posted on Facebook. They said it was false. But when you actually click the link, it corroborated and proved everything I said, but added fake context to my tweet in an effort to debunk. That's, what, that, that's, that's the point I often say how they do these fake fact checks, right? So let's say you say something like, uh, my dog did a backflip. And there's a video of a dog doing a backflip. If they want to put a false label on it, they won't say, did you know John's dog do a backflip? They'll say, did, did, John, did John's dog do a backflip on Sunday afternoon? False. And they'll give you this big, long-winded, here are the claims. It's not true. It's not true at all. And at the very bottom, it says, he did do the backflip, but not on Sunday. By adding that one little tidbit, they try and use it as a way to debunk the entire thing. That's what they're doing. We got a quote from someone. Therefore, it's fake news. No. They say, in addition, she explained the only belts that were scanned after the media and other observers had left were those that had already been opened in front of these observers. So what's the video we watch? What are they pulling from under our table? Why did these people say that they were told to leave? And I'll tell you this. Why do we have this story? Some ballots will not be counted until Wednesday in Georgia following water main break. Oh, oh no. From November 4th, they were, this was 1.20 a.m. CBS reports. They had to stop counting because of a water main break. Oh, geez. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. wait. Hold on. What's this? From news.com.au. Slow leak. Text messages cast doubt on Georgia officials burst, As burst pipe the- excuse for pause and counting. An unprecedented decision on election night caused outrage, and now texts have blown apart the official story, raising more questions from November 13th. Oh my, it wasn't a water main break. They told everyone to leave and they stopped counting, supposedly, because of a slow leak on a toilet, which people questioned because you can just turn the knob on the base of the toilet and shut the water off. What is this? This is not fake news. These are from official well-known news outlets. I pulled up news.com.au. There's a bunch of other outlets that say similar things. No, they're going to tell you that it's fake news. They're going to tell you not, not to look behind the curtain. But it seems like we actually have legit evidence. My friends, we have a major update here. Check this out. Governor, uh, Georgia Governor Kemp is calling on Secretary of State Raffensperger to call for a signature audit of votes. Kemp appeared on the Ingram angle in the wake of damning security cam footage that showed poll workers in Fulton County illegally processing ballots with no observers coming from under a table. I show you the fact check, but let me just put it this way. Now, if you're if you're a skeptic, if, if you don't want to believe it, fine. Let me ask you a question. Would you trust an individual who is not present, was not there, did not watch the video footage, and has not sworn a statement under oath? Or would you trust the people who were there who sworn a statement under penalty of perjury that they were told to leave with a video then showing a person talking to them and then they leave and then pulling out ballot boxes from under a table and then counting? Come on. It is, it is, it is absolutely unreasonable. You know, the other night on the IRL podcast, we had Destiny. Uh, Destiny is... I guess he refers to himself as relatively far left on a lot of issues. And I, I, I couldn't believe it because I otherwise think he's, he's, he's an okay dude. Uh, aside, whatever controversy, I don't, know, I, don't know, I don't know him that well, but we had a good conversation, you know, clearly disagreed. In Pennsylvania, a judge ruled that so long as an observer is in the building, then the law is satisfied. When we all know the purpose of observers is to look at the ballots, to scrutinize them as they're being counted. And he didn't agree. He was like, well, no, I don't know, whatever, whatever the law says, if they they should have sued beforehand. I'm like, this is the crazy thing to me. We when you have an instance where the observers leave, they just come out and say, well, that's their fault. Okay, well, they swore under penalty of perjury. They were told to leave and they were they were playing by the rules. A lot of these people in a bunch of different jurisdictions say that they were being abused. They were being kicked out. They were scared that if they ruffled too many feathers, they wouldn't be allowed to observe at all. And for the most part, they weren't. Why is this happening? Why in these very important states are we hearing all of these stories? Is it because in New York, it's not a swing state, so nobody cares to look at the evidence, perhaps? 
In Georgia and Arizona, they're saying it's like the first time in 40 years they voted Democrat. Why are we hearing these weird stories? Why do we have so much of this? Possibly it happens all the time. And uh, that's actually quite scary. It's possible that Joe Biden isn't actively seeking out any, any evidence. One question being raised is why are all of these mistakes beneficial to the Democrats? All, all of these you know, errors, the glitches, the vote flipping, whatever, always beneficial to Democrats when they happen. Could be that uh, Biden's not looking for it, but that doesn't explain Georgia and these several counties where votes were found uncounted for Donald Trump. I now give you, or I should say un- uncounted in general, which leans Trump. I now give you the final and most important kind of bit on this. We have this video of them pulling out ballots from under a table and counting them. People aren't there. We also have stories that several ballots for Trump, uh, uh, se- several batches that ultimately gave Trump a huge lead, a historic gain in a recount, were discovered not to have been counted. So these things happen. These, these errors, these imp- this impropriety, it literally happens. At what point do you need more evidence that something is broken in this? To clarify, I'm not saying Trump is correct that the election was changed by widespread fraud. I am saying you cannot deny what we are seeing in this. And it needs to warrant a hardcore high level investigation of some sort. Well, they're going to do a signature audit. I don't know if that'll be enough. We'll see. I guess they're going to keep fighting. I've got news on Pennsylvania, and I'm like trying to figure out which story do I do. But this broke before the Pennsylvania story broke. So I'm like, okay, I'll do this story first at 1 p.m. I will cover this on this channel. So come back, share this video, subscribe, hit the like button. There has been an official request to the Supreme Court, and Alito is, is requesting an official response from SCOTUS by December 9th. This could break Pennsylvania. Stick around at 1 p.m. I will be back with that story. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.